for once I'm outside of the building, but I'm still at Leica, Wetzlar, Germany, and I'm sitting here with Mark Shippard. Did I get that right? Yes, I think I always have to make sure. And uh, he's the chief designer, is that correct? Correct. Yes. Have uh, Leica products, and uh, we're going to have a fascinating talk. We've spent the last hour or so talking about so many things, but one of the things that you'll see in the background here is the uh, Leica offices, and Looking at the building on the left-hand side is a section of the building that's designed to look like a binoculars. On the side where the uh, Leica logo is back there, it's kind of designed, if you look at it, like almost an M lens. You know, I can almost put like an M lens up there and have that whole look. So one of the things that is classic with Leica, something we've seen for the last few days with Leica, is that design is paramount. Uh, obviously, image quality and, you know, so many other things are very, very important, but the design of the cameras, the feel of the cameras, uh, these are something that goes completely throughout the whole line. And Mark is in charge of this, and he's got this huge job. One of the things, for example, and we'll start talking about it with, with the M. Mark, when I look at this camera, and you made, when the M10 was released, there were some new things that happened, and I'll point them out, and then you can tell me the story about them. You put an ISO mm -hmm. dial up here, which wasn't here before, and now as a user, I can look down and I can see my ISO shutter speed, f-stop, and, and focus. But on the back, I used to have a whole bunch of buttons. There's only three buttons now, and a knob, and you know, a place I can put my thumb. So, more than anything else, the camera is a lot thinner. Uh, actually, a whole four millimeters thinner. Four yeah, yeah. So we have achieved um, the first time in, in the digital era of the M, the same proportion, the same thickness uh, as we do with the, the analog version, the film camera. So it was a big step. Um, so how did you go through this step? What happened? Someday somebody come to you and go, well, you got to make a thinner camera and we're going to call it uh, and, and take buttons off? Or yeah, well, was that you guys that decided that? It, 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 I'd say that, it was, that that was kind of a, a common vision. You know, we, we talked uh, some years ago about how the new M should be. And uh, whether that was coming from a design perspective or a, uh, a product management perspective, um, oddly we all had pretty much the same targets. And the main target was to get that proportion back from the, from the film camera. The topic of reduction of, of, of elements is something that goes back uh, anyway a long time in the heritage of, of Leica and Leica design, the simplicity. So how did you end up making it thinner? Uh, well, you know, the, the thing is that some things are limited, and uh, one limiting thing is the optics. So something we cannot change is the distance between the, the mount surface and the sensor plane. This is fixed, you know, this yeah, is yeah. calculation of, of all the lenses, otherwise no, the M lenses wouldn't work anymore. So we have to take out some volume at the back. It means about shifting electronics around, so we no longer have the, the full sensor board all the way through the back. The electronics have basically been restacked in there to allow us to, to achieve that. Um, but of course that was a lot of hard work. Uh, it sounds simple, but yeah. there's uh, quite a few engineers that were uh, sweating over that one for quite some time to get that to happen. You, you put an ISO dial up here. That was a kind of a departure from any of the previous... Yeah, yeah. Well, the one thing that we want to maintain on our products is, is this direct mechanical operation. And especially when we are talking about taking pictures. So the primary picture-taking mode of a camera has to be mechanical. We don't want to be, you know, doing stuff on this screen with menus and things. And it was one thing that we didn't have on the M as such was to have, okay, a dedicated ISO dial on the digital M's. And back in the film days, yeah, it, was, yeah, that was, yeah. it was on the back. Yep. So we had that space available. It was so the question, how would we achieve that? Because it wasn't a whole lot of space when you see that the, sorry, that the, yeah, please, um, that the rangefinder system obviously takes a lot of that volume. So without being able to, to sacrifice anything, we we'll actually improve the rangefinder system with this model. Uh, we didn't have much space, so it's in quite an exposed position. As we discussed earlier, you definitely don't want to have the, uh, the, the problem of, okay, you have a, a setting of, uh, of, 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 of 100. Yep. Um, you're moving around with your camera, it's strapped, it's here, it's maybe on your back or in your bag, and you take it out and all of a sudden it's reset. So this was one issue we wanted to avoid. So we're able to get with the engineers to design a mechanic, Pop it up. pops up, you can reset, auto, back down, locked. Perfect. So obviously very, very conscious decisions along the way. And uh, the other thing is 
used to be, what, how many buttons? Five buttons on the back here? Yeah. There's three now. Yeah. So you made a conscious decision to remove buttons. Yeah, we, we always evaluate the functions and the interface elements on all of our products and always asking, is it necessary? How do we make it simpler? Not just from a design point of view, from a user perspective. And we were able to, together with our interface team, we have specialists in our team and in the company who work in detail about how to make interfaces more intuitive for our users, simpler. Um, reduce that to three main buttons together with the, the, the navigation key um, to make the next step in, in, in interface design. We also have a touch screen on the back. Yeah. It's touch, certain touch interfaces. Now, now let's go to some of the, the, the newer models. We have, let's start with the, the TL2. Yeah, I have one just here. You have one there. Yeah. This, is a, this is a true departure. Uh, we've kind of talked about this in a previous video, but it's so thin, so light, and it's totally different because the menu system, which you're also responsible for, the interface, is, uh, how would you call it? Um, we, we call it tile design. Tiles. So, so yes. Yeah. You, have, you, you, you pick a tile and you can drag tiles around. Uh, you can zoom in and out and yeah. pinch. Much the way that people work with, uh, let's say, app icons and things mm -hmm. these days on other devices. So it's a lot closer aligned to uh, the world of um, portable devices, if you say, if you like, you know, from, from an interface concept. But once again, very simplified, very limited use of color. So primarily black and white. Um, you wouldn't have seen too many flashy effects and that kind of stuff. Um, so... Uh, it's so fast and the screen is so crisp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that, that's, that's what surprises people when they say, this is a camera with yeah. such an interface. You know, we have, the, let's say, the traditional version, which is the, the menu-based system. Um, but, you know, once again, from a, our perspective, a, a, a much more simplified version of that. Um, and then the, the touch, uh, the highly um, touch version of that, which is uh, based on tiles. So uh, you've also simplified, you know, the, the doors, just everything feels so natural the way it's engineered. One of the things that I really enjoy on so many of the cameras lately is just the way the battery is introduced as part of the design. Mm. So, you know, you're just not putting a hatch and dropping the standard battery in there, but, you know, the battery is, is part of the, the look of the, the camera. So, you know, it's a touch and pop and pull. And, uh, then it goes in there and it's weather sealed and, and yeah. laid right in. I mean, the, the finesse of all of this is uh, absolutely amazing. You know, and even when you hold this, it doesn't have any leather on it. So you, this was a departure, you know, yeah. none of the, the typical leather. And not one label. Wow. Wow. What? How? <laughs> I, had a, I would have liked to have been a fly on the wall the day you decided we don't need any labels. Yeah, when you picture, when you're shooting images, you don't need it. You know, you see everything on the screen or through the uh, the viewfinder. So essentially, you just you know it takes a little orientation, but once you understand Absolutely. what a few exactly. of the buttons are, exactly, a couple of minutes to to understand. Okay, well, how do I set the camera up from my particular user preference? You know, do I want to shoot aperture priority, shutter priority? What do I want to have happening here with these two main dials? It's more than two, you don't need. Um, you have your focus ring on the lens anyway, zoom ring on zoom lenses. Um, that's all you need to shoot pictures. Yeah, and, and it just feels good to hold on to this. Um, and this rolls us into the CL. And then, you know, I, I, I thought this is brilliant, and then I see real brilliance. And the CL camera is just, you know, another evolution of brilliant design. And it reminds me of when I walk through uh, the exhibit and look at some of the older Leica cameras. Absolutely. You took a little bit of departure, didn't smooth some things out, but you picked up a little bit of the heritage absolutely. and redesigned it into, you know, this camera, which is absolutely cool. It's got the viewfinder and uh, the two dials, and once again, a brilliant menu. Simple. I, I got to come back to this, and it, it's not an insult when I say, you know, simple, simple. No, I, no. Yeah. I mean, my friends in playground used to say, "God, Kevin, you're so simple," and it's like. <laughs> so not in that method, okay? <laughs> but when, when you look at the menus, it's so easy to, you know, get to where you want to be, make the selection of what you want to use and, and work with it. Uh, the two dials, and one of the departures here is on the two dials, you also put a center button. So talk a little bit about how the whole concept of that camera came about. Yeah, it is, it is, it's quite different. It's a system camera, also APS-C um, APS sensor camera. So it is... Um, compatible with the lenses of the TL system. 
with the TL, we went a long way to make it as simple as possible from a design point of view, from ergonomics, from the interface. So the attribute of simplicity was pushed there as far as we could go. With the CL, we wanted to respect a lot more of the heritage of the Leica brand and the previous products through the design. So we have an uh, interface which is, let's say, closer aligned with the M camera in terms of what goes on right. here. Um, however, um, we have the same or similar two dials uh, like on the TL, but we have the addition of a button, much the way you do with a click wheel on an mm -hmm. SL or an S camera. So you can very simply reset the functionality of the camera, the picture taking mode, or do you have uh, exposure compensation or ISO on the other button um, without having to go into the menu on the back. I so have to tell you, it's freaking brilliant. I, I hadn't had so much fun shooting with a camera nice. as that because you could make the changes so quick. I tend to have a, a tendency like, okay, I like aperture priority, but I love manual. And to be able to switch very quickly from those, but then as I switched, both dials took on different functions. Yeah. Um, yeah. uh, it was takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of learning, a couple of minutes, but you pick it up very quickly. Yeah. Well, that's I think that's part of the beauty. Everything takes a, a little bit of time, but even I didn't need a manual for it. Didn't have a manual for me, but okay. it just said ah, 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 and oh, I get it. And all of a sudden, awesome. you know, I felt I was at home. Uh, so this is really cool. And the viewfinder is built in, and it just God, I, I like to call it elegant. I don't know really what to yeah. call it well, yet. We, we show it. We show it, though, in the design. We yeah. don't f fully hide it, the EVF or the, the viewfinder or the dials on top. Oh. So, And you, you, you saw the link to the heritage in the museum. Yep. You know, By having a top cap design where there is a certain amount of detail, we like to show that this is a camera with a viewfinder. And and it, you've incorporated other things with it. There's a you know, thumb rest and a few other things even to make the, the shooting and Absolutely. working with it even more pleasurable. One of the things that I, I like about this camera, and you can't see it so much here, but somewhere you decided I'm going to reinvent the lugs for the strap. Yeah. And this is what I talk about, the, the minutia, the small things in design that make a difference. This is basically a, a push and pull out Correct. kind of lug. So you can just, there's a little tool they give you, you put in a little hole, uh, yeah, hole there and it pops up. Paper clip style tool. Yeah. But, and then you, you, you can either insert uh, a different method or uh, just plug it up and have it without the, That's the, right. the well, lugs itself. Yeah. So some people they don't want they might just want a wrist strap and they don't want to have anything here, so it's completely f flush. Um, other people might want to put a classic strap on here from let's say an M camera. So we have this adapter for the classic straps, yeah. and then we have the mechanical um, hinging strap specifically for this line of camera. Yeah, which well. is the, the it's almost a rubberized. Yeah, the strap. silicon silicon strap. Silicone strap. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then that just plugs right in. But if you want to switch it, uh, you just you know, pop yeah. it right back yeah. out. Uh, so these are the kind of things are, where design is so important. There's, I suppose, easy ways to do camera design, and then there's clever ways, and then there's brilliant ways. And you know, one of the things that Leica is not afraid to do is, you know, go where other cameras or makers are afraid to go. I mean, you've done some real innovative things from the, the menu systems, which I think you've done a brilliant job. And one of the things that's fun, you, you have three different menu systems that I'm accustomed to. Um, the XU, which is a camera we haven't talked a lot about, but we've done a review on so our readers can go and see the review on our site, where it's just you know, a camera meant to be used in a different kind of environment, robust. underwater, robust, uh, built, rubberized. I mean, this thing really a very cool camera. And a very brilliant menu system where you know, you just, it just kind of scrolls right through and your choices are simple and they're exactly what you need for the mm -hmm. camera. Mm -hmm. You know, the M8, which is a little bit more detailed, but once again, just as easy to navigate. There's a little bar that goes on the, the left side, which tells you which one of the menu screens you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the SL, the left SL's got four buttons, as well as the S, where you learn the four buttons and they position you in the right place. So you've, you've, you've gone a bunch of different places, but you, you just done some amazing things along that way. Let me come to the SL for a minute because this is another camera that I really like. The four button design and the only thing you have written on the mm. SL is on and off. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> <In fact. laughs> I needed it. I think I could have figured that switch yeah. out to be yeah. honest with you. But yeah. you know, after that, uh, once again, it's a, a camera with no buttons yeah. and no yeah. labels. Yeah, it, it, in very much the way the S is. So. It, it, um, basically, let's say, inherited the user interface of the S for the professional line of cameras. 
you got a silver box over here. Any guy that comes to a meeting with a silver box, <laughs> I got a few more has, things here. So. Has something to say. So yeah, I know you, you know your primary interest is obviously photography, but uh, Leica, where in our design department, we're designing other products, and um, this is one that's just been released. Um, uh, the new Trinovid binoculars, um, one of the, the projects we, we did some, some time back, um, but very much in line with the heritage of, of Leica. So a very clear link to one of the products of, of the past and uh, very much the part on to, to the M uh, series of cameras. Um, I think the, 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 the main attributes that you see there that you also uh, see and feel in the M camera is the, the heritage. Um, it's very authentic, so you know the materials, the feel, of the product. What, what I, when you say the feel of the product, not only you know, is the, the feel of the, the leather and how nice it is to hold, but the, the same kind of feel that you get with the, the lenses we talked about earlier when you focus them, you know, you almost just want to just end up turning the knobs because yeah. it just feels I mean, so good. That's, that's, a, that's you know, another attribute that we always consider is the topic of precision. And, and how do we bring precision into our product? And that is through the feel as much as it is through the, through the look of the product. And where you have interface elements, you have dials on lenses, cameras, buttons, it has to be precise. You have to have that feedback, that mechanical feedback. Well, it, it's, I mean, it's a purely analog product. There is no digital sure, sure, in this sure. one. So, you know, this is, you have these two dials, you have the that's adjustment it. for the size of the, the, the person, and, and that's it. The, the dials are easy to turn, but they're, they don't drift. So, you know, they're not so easy you're going to bump them and make them change. They're not so easy that, you know, they're going to change on their own. But they're so smooth to operate in, in, in regards to that. Two things that I've noticed throughout. You've got the silver and the black and the black. And, you know, there's kind of a consistency of choices. You know, there's, for example, with this model, you can get, you can see the silver lens on here, but you can get a silver body. Absolutely. It's a yeah. full aluminium body. So we do this in the, um, in the silver and the black anodized. Yep. Uh, but the silver and the black is something that runs through the line, similar to what you're showing here. So you're working within certain parameters, aren't you? Yeah, no, we, we, we have to, once again, it's about respecting also the heritage of the brand and, um, and the, the silver and, and the black, whether you have a complete black camera just with silver details, you know, maybe it's just an accent like the shutter button or the, uh, the lens release button. Um, or once you know you can get the the M also with a silver top bottom cap as well, and it's you know it's a little bit more expressive, let's say, but it has a very close uh, link to the heritage of oh, the it's product. Beautiful, you know it's it's funny. I want to own a black camera because I don't want people to see me walking around the streets with it because you want to kind of be inconspicuous. But I want a silver and black one because I just want to put that out on the shelf in my living room because yeah, yeah. it looks so. I good. know what you're saying. I mean, it's, it's, it's an object. They just have yeah. you know a fascination when you have this combination of black and silver. Um, when you're sort of, let's say, out there and you're doing street photography or, you know, you're observing, uh, maybe you want the more understated look and the complete black is probably the way to go there, um, for sure. Well, I must say that listening to you, having the opportunity to talk in depth with you earlier uh, about the design, it's just fascinating. You've got a really challenging job. Um, you've delivered some amazing design to products that no one else is doing, and you should feel real proud of your accomplishments, but as a user who's had the opportunity now to work with all these products, and even the new CL, which I'm just beginning to like more and more, uh, you've done a heck of a job. So I'm sure you've got new ones that you're working on. <laughs> uh, I'd be surprised if you didn't. And I can't wait to see how anything that comes in the future is, uh, once again, even refined more. So Yeah, fantastic. Thank Mark, you very much for thanks that. Thanks so much uh, for the, spending the time with us for bringing your silver box and you know, for talking a little bit about the whole design element that goes into uh, what's so important, and that's the Leica camera. So, My pleasure, thank you for your time. Once again, everybody, <laughs> thank you very much. I wanna thank Leica for allowing us to you know, visit, Mark for sitting down, all the people, but uh, more than anything else, thanks for being part of this. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the Luminous Landscape.